So if we look at the basic three areas, one of understanding the brain, the big obstacle actually is not that we don't have enough knowledge. We're generating a ton of knowledge. What's happening is that the knowledge is becoming more and more fragmented. And this is, it's actually becoming a big data problem. And this is why and how ICT is going to help solve this problem, because what we have to do is to trigger a massive international collaboration and begin to integrate this data. Understanding the brain's diseases is a serious problem for Europe. It's already costing $100 billion a, a year. Um, it's, uh, it's the major cause of the loss of economic productivity and it's rising. The reason why we can't solve brain diseases is a similar problem. We actually, despite the fact that we know more and more about the brain, it's becoming more and more difficult to develop treatments for the brain. In fact, it's so difficult, it's becoming so difficult, pharmaceutical companies are pulling out. They're stopping to try to develop treatments for the brain. This is a crisis. So what we have to do again here is address the big data problem. We have to federate and look at all the clinical data as a whole and analyze it informatically. Then the third major industry that will be affected by this is the computing industry. Computing and communications, everybody knows it very well, here underpins the economies. Traditional computing is facing very significant challenges in many, many areas. And what is needed is energy efficiency, robustness, self-adapting, self-repairing, intelligent technologies. But what's missing is a systematic way to derive the insights about how the brain works and turn it into technology. Without that pipeline, without that process, we can have a lot of insights, we can have a lot of technology, but we cannot connect these two. So, why must this be done now? Not in two years or in five years. Why must this be absolutely done now? First of all, all the trends indicate that it's inevitable. It's happening. If you follow, this is in this report, you can see it in detail, from the 1970s, the digitalization of both neuroscience and medicine has been going and the emerging of ICT has been systematically getting closer and closer to accelerate all three domains. So if you look at how we're studying the brain, the mapping of the brain, uh, global collaboration is accelerating, medicine is going digital, supercomputers have crossed threshold power, neuromorphic computing can completely change the way supercomputers work, add a new dimension to the way supercomputers work. Neuromorphic computing uh, can bring brain-like technologies, low power, brain-like and intelligent technologies. The second reason why this absolutely should be a European project is because it really can, is the ideal project to leverage from European strengths. Europe is uniquely positioned for massive collaboration. This is what Europe has pioneered, is collaboration in science, technology and education. Europe has the expertise in all these key areas. Uh, and it is a unique opportunity for Europe to bring these strengths together. There is a small window of opportunity. The technology produced will be key economic drivers. Um, and the project will actually serve researchers globally. So this is not a project for a particular group. It is a project that will benefit researchers internationally. So Europe is in a strategic position to lead in three major research areas. And it's actually, these are very difficult research areas to get into that lead. We have that opportunity and we can take that opportunity now. Why should it be a flagship? Well, we have studied this and it does match significantly the European and national priorities. It addresses an urgent social need, it is strate strategic economic positioning. It's important. There's a massive multidisciplinary collaboration. It needs long-term funding. It's a focused project that will make collaboration work. Easy to say collaboration, but it has the focus that will make collaboration work. It's beyond the scope of any one country. 
it will benefit all countries. It needs to, we can use theory to create a unified mathematical foundation for the brain. Ethics will become an important part of both science and society. It will build, it, it is built on foundations. This is not a project that just came out of nothing. This is after years and decades of investment in Europe to build the foundations. And what we're doing is putting these foundations together. It's technically timely and feasible, entirely feasible. And it leverages on the spectrum of European strengths. So what are we going to do? We're going to build six platforms. And these platforms are designed to accelerate our understanding of the brain, its diseases, and to develop future computing technologies. Uh, it's composed of a core consortium today of 21 European countries, as well as US, Japan, and China. And the platforms will be open to researchers for a new paradigm of collaborative science and medicine engineering. The six platforms basically are in neuroinformatics, big data, brain simulation, integrating the data, medical informatics, bringing clinical data together, high performance computing, driving exascale and with new capabilities, neuromorphic computing, intelligence in hardware, neurorobotics, finally intelligence for robots. These platforms will be set up and running and the first versions of them available to the community within the ramp up phase. We will use these platforms to address challenges that would be much more difficult and we consider almost impossible without building these platforms to answer fundamental scientific questions. And we believe this is really what makes the Human Brain Project unique, is that we are addressing fundamental scientific questions that will have global impact. The uniqueness of the human brain, how we perceive, how we react, how we remember information, and how this affects us. It will help us understand the spectrum of brain diseases, not just one disease, but how do these diseases fit together. And it will generate a new paradigm of computing. The message is that we absolutely need to drive a glo to address these global challenges. We have to start a global collaboration. These are the three research areas that the project is structured around, brain simulation, medical informatics, and future computing. In brain simulation, what we aim to do is build unifying models of the human brain. This means that we will account for and explain all the available knowledge we have in a way that it will benefit understanding the human brain. It will accelerate our understanding of the brain, bring value to past experiments, organize all the fragments of information that are out there, make this information publicly accessible so others can benefit from it. It will use novel ICT tools to fill gaps in knowledge that will take us decades, if not centuries, to do only with experiments. It will generate strategic missing data so that we can fill these gaps informatively and in a way that we can validate them. And it will help us prioritize. There are potentially millions of experiments that you'd have to do to understand the brain. This project will help us prioritize and identify the most important ones, optimize them, and accelerate biological understanding. It will establish a collaborative, for the first time, a collaborative approach to understanding the brain. In medical informatics, it's very similar. We aim to build an ICT foundation for diagnosing and treating brain diseases. And it will accelerate our understanding of brain diseases, increase the value of clinical records that have been taken in hospitals all over the world. It will help us organize how this clinical data should come together and to make sense of it. It will drive a global collaboration of hospitals, instead of sitting there in isolation, to benefit from records coming from all over the world. We will derive signatures, mathematical signatures of diseases that will give us a very informed way of understanding diseases. It will help us understand the differences and the similarities between diseases, not just within one disease as a little silo of study, but across diseases. And it will provide us new tools to keep pharma in the game and nutrition companies in the game, it will provide them new tools to get much better performance in the way that they develop drugs and develop treatments. 
In future computing, we aim at developing brain-inspired future computing technologies, which will also accelerate the development of brain-inspired computing. It's the pipeline that we want to develop. It will provide a platform to systematically derive new technologies in a very informed and scientific way. It will develop visually interactive supercomputing, to, to, which is absolutely essential to manage big data. Exascale machines will generate petabytes of data. It will cost millions to move and analyze. If you do not have interactive supercomputers, to, uh, you, will make, you will not be able to have as much benefit from these um, machines as possible, and it will make managing big data far more difficult. We'll develop low-power, robust, self-adapting and intelligent computing and communication devices and drive a new paradigm of computing. This is the paradigm shift that computing is waiting for. The consortium is currently a core consortium which is aimed at building the platform and showing to the world what these platforms can do and then helping the world to come and use this platform. 250 principal investigators, 150 institutions, 24 countries, and a circle of industries. In fact, we have a very large circle of industries that we will involve in a unique way in the project so that all industries can benefit from this project. We will provide a unique R&D platform around brain simulation, medical informatics, and future computing. Companies such as Bosch will help us and work to develop intelligent engines. Companies such as IBM and Cray and Intel will develop in the technology and the hard software and hardware technology for interactive supercomputing and for managing massive data. Volks Volkswagen involved to help drive intelligent vehicles. SAP to help us develop intelligent ways to mine and analyze massive amounts of data. Just an example of a few. It is an open science platform for science and education. It is designed to be open science, open to partners from the very beginning and especially with a focus on young scientists. The budget fraction for open science in our project will rise to about 50% for external partners. This project is being set up to involve as many interested and expert partners as possible. And it will foster and train and educate a, com a new generation of multidisciplinary scientists, clinicians and engineers. We will have a unique way to engage the public and deal and discuss with, on, on the ethical issues. We will establish an ethics committee a foresight institute where we'll have events and discussions and look into the future, what are the impact that future technologies can have on society. There will be very strong ethical steering, not just advice, but ethical steering of this project. We will have a continuous exhibitions and updates in science museums all around the world, so that at any moment in time you want to know what are the benefits and what you can learn about the brain and its diseases and the kind of technology that can be built from it, you'll be able to walk into your local science museum in Argentina or in Australia or in Japan or China and see it and experience it and learn from it. And this is a way that we will disseminate this knowledge. We have discussed with many, including CERN, who will be involved in this project, as well as uh, investigative projects, the Human Genome Project, and other big-scale projects, how to govern such a project. It's a huge challenge. We also discussed with big corporations, multinational corporations, such as Novartis and Nestle. And we have come up with what we believe is a new generation model for how we can effectively implement and govern and manage this project so that every country and every institution, every scientist has an equal opportunity of participating in this project. We structured this scientific organization actually very much on the lines of CERN, we learned from them, where we have scientific divisions and cross-cutting areas of research that will leverage from these different scientific divisions. We originally called them pillars, today we call them divisions. The project's cost is going to be 1.190 billion. Most of the work is going to go to building, most of the funding is going to go to building platforms, about 40 percent. 
about 27% is going to go to generating the strategic data that is going to help us build these platforms, test them, and demonstrate their value. We will have an, a significant initiative around theory and understanding the mathematical basis of what we're doing, management, ethics. The divisions uh, will have, we've worked out a very extensive planning for the budget. And in, in the last thing, I'd just like to finalize by pointing out that this report, again, is public. You can download it from the website. The Human Brain Project is a European-driven, integrative, collaborative approach to a fundamental scientific question that will have enormous benefits for science and technology. Thank you. Thank you.